<laughs> you can tell I've done this a couple times. <laughs> yeah, just from just from that part, it looks like it's going to be a uh, good start to interview. <laughs> I was listening to a podcast with you this morning uh, from 2019. No, Let me see. It was called the Learn to Soar podcast. Oh, yeah. I was taking notes at the gym here. I kept using my talk to text to try to watch your. Yeah, that was uh, that was one of the earlier days podcast. Who was I interviewing at that time? You were actually a guest on a show, the Inspire Before We Expire podcast. Okay, later. yeah, yeah, that was an interview that I did with a gentleman many, many uh, years ago, back in 2019, and I, I do remember that. Yep. Mm-hmm. One of the first things that was really cool is you started your own oil company at 23 years old. Yep. Did you have guidance for parents or friends or somebody else that you no. know it, or you just? <laughs> It's a funny story. Um, So what happened is I was going to school um, wanting to be an architect and I was studying architecture at the time and just looking for a part time job. So, you know, one day I opened up the newspaper and started circling ads and sending resumes off. And I got a call one day from a small oil company that got my resume and they said, you know, we got your resume. The CEO would like to uh, schedule an interview. So I went in and uh, he just took a liking to me and uh, said, you know, you're a real smart kid. You're able to think on your feet. Uh, what we'd love to do is give you a job part time to come in between classes and after school. And basically what they hired me to do was to get on the phone and just, uh, you know, call out to people and build trust in a relationship and convince them to ultimately uh, invest in our drilling programs. And so I got really good at that. I started studying sales and started studying closing techniques and literally, you know, working maybe 12, 15 hours a week uh, was making close to $100,000 a year. And so I said to myself, like, what am I doing in school trying to graduate with a piece of paper to go out in the corporate world and make 60, 70 when I'm making close to 100, working 12 to 15 hours a week? So I basically, after doing that for a year, went to work for a second oil company. And uh, unbeknownst to me, it turned out they were a bunch of crooks. One of my investors, uh, who was a petroleum engineer, had uncovered some uh, fraudulent information in their offering memorandum. So um, I immediately resigned. Uh, didn't want to have anything to do with them. Uh, the thing that really sucked is that I believed so much in them while I was there that I convinced my dad to actually invest. And so I felt terrible about that. So when I resigned, I just said, look, guys, you know, it's one thing to steal from people. But when you steal from the families of the people that actually work for you, that's pretty low. And they're like, oh, well, you know, what do you mean? And so I basically just told them what I had uncovered. You know, you're you're erasing dry holes off of production maps to make the fields look more prolific. You're inflating production records. Uh, you're you're buying used oil field equipment and painting it so it looks new. Yadi done. I'm out of here. So we filed a class action lawsuit, which we won. But hey, I heard that. That was awesome. Yeah, all the uh, investors turned to me because at the time we didn't have the internet. We didn't have Zoom. I was doing this back in the mid late 80s. I mean, they had no idea I was a 22, 23 year old kid. So um, they said, well, Brad, like, what are you going to do now? And I said, I don't know. They said, why don't you do what they were doing, but just do it with some integrity. And so I think what I saw is just this huge opportunity where, you know, I can always go back to school, but I may never have the chance to uh, launch a business. And so I had never drilled a well, (laughs) knew nothing about running a business. All I knew how to do was raise money. And so I printed up some letterhead and some stationery and some business cards and got a securities attorney and got a geologist and kind of put all the pieces together. And you're absolutely right. At the age of 23, I launched an oil company and grew that over 10 years and had a great time. We had 35 employees and we had drilling programs going in Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, raising millions of dollars a month. And that's kind of where I started this whole journey of, you know, learning how to raise money and uh, learning how to raise capital. And fast forward, as people call me today, I'm the $2 billion guy because I've raised $2 billion through my efforts and the uh, efforts of teams I put together over the years. So it's uh, been really a fun journey. Yeah, That's incredible. And I mean, that is a ridiculous oh, yeah. amount of amount of funds. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Of businesses you're, you're yeah. dealing with. So we actually had a similar thing. You know, I started a pharmaceutical company when I was really young. You know, me and a friend, I, I had a buddy whose wife was a hairdresser. And so we'd yeah. highlight uh, gray in both of our, both of our facial <laughs> hair, had gray streaks and stuff. And you know, tr- going to these meetings with, I had doctors and stuff working for me. A lot of ours had to be in person. So mm-hmm. you know, we had our, our lead pharmacist was out, of, was out of Chicago and we never met him. It was just all phone conversations. But, sure. um, you know, Zoom and the uh, video calls and stuff make that a lot more difficult now because it's so much mm-hmm. harder to fake if you're a young kid. But, but there's yeah. also so much more opportunity now. 
we've got literally the sum of the entire all human knowledge in the palm of our hand. You can Google yeah, it. Yeah, you want. Yep. It's amazing when you see these young kids that are in their mid late twenties, you know, making seven figures with social media or, you know, just running businesses. I mean, they, they have, like you said, access to knowledge. And, you know, if you go to the events, if you listen to the coaches, if you get a coach, if you read the books, you can literally emulate and almost replicate what others that have been wildly successful have done and just get to where they are that much quicker rather than trying to figure it out along the way. You know, you can you can figure it out on your own, but it's a lot easier when somebody says, if you do these things, which I've already done, you'll basically reach a level of success much faster. And, um, you know, I love it. I mean, I, I have a lot of people in our coaching uh, curriculum that we mentor that are out raising tons of money and they're investing in multifamily and they're doing big deals in real estate. I mean, one guy's in his mid twenties, you know, his business will do six, seven million dollars this year, um, just in real estate alone. So yeah, I mean, it's just great. And, uh, you know, I love what I do, which is really just teaching people how to attract, how to raise, how to close money, because it's like the biggest problem most businesses and entrepreneurs face. You, you need capital to grow. And you can either borrow from a bank, you can go get an SBA loan, or you can learn how to raise investor capital. And, and yeah. part of that, you were talking about uh, this, one of the other podcasts that I listened to you on said, protect your name. I think this was your grandfather told you to protect yeah. your name because it's going yeah. to stay with you. That uh, determination to keep your ethics and integrity and, and yeah. do what's right, no matter if it's costing you money or... I mean, you could have yep. stayed with that that second oil company and sure, yeah, kept making a making a killing. And you know, besides yeah. your dad losing money, if you didn't have the ethics and integrity, you could have rode yep. that train for quite a while, not filed the class action suit and stuff. But I think absolutely, that's you're a, you're absolutely right. Yep. One of the things I'm really excited. You just talked about being, you know, surrounding yourself with leaders and people who have accomplished things that you want to accomplish in your life. Surrounding mm -hmm. yourself with successful people. Yeah. And you're going to be a, a speaker at the Grow, Stack, Drive, Create conference in Atlanta at the end of the month. Um, I got elements in my speech. Let's put it that way. <laughs> you know, uh, one of the things that I love to do when I go to these events is stay for the, the whole event. Um, I'm not one of these people to fly in, do my presentation, stick around and then fly out. Um, I really like to spend time there because... It gives me a sense of the audience um, as I talk to people, you know, what they're really looking for. And then I can kind of tailor my presentation to some degree. But for the most part, you know, my presentation is largely put together based on what I call my prior experiences. Uh, you know, what people go to events for is to really learn from my past mistakes so that they can avoid making them themselves. But it's really just, uh, you know, getting up there on stage inspiring and motivating people and then basically sharing them some information that hopefully they can put to use immediately when they get back home. The thing that really sucks for a lot of people is they go to these events and they get that injection of motivation and inspiration for a couple hours and then they go home and they never do anything with it. Yep. And, so, you know, when I'm on stage, I tell everybody, take notes, you go home, open up your notebook, you know, read what you took notes on, but more importantly, put some effort and action behind just a few things that you learned while you're here, because that's where you'll see the big growth and the big change. If you're just here to get an injection of, you know, motivation for a couple hours, then you're not going to do anything. You know, your life's largely going to be the same. And it's so funny, you know, we talk about how to attract, how to raise other people's money, which is referred to in the industry of raising capital as OPM, uh, other people's money. And I tell people, get off the hopium. And everybody laughs. And I'm like, no, opium is like the most powerful drug out there. It's worse than cocaine. It's worse than LSD. It's a powerful narcotic. It's hoping your life will get better. Hoping, no you're action, better. Yeah. hoping you'll make more money. You can hope all you want, you know, but hoping ain't going to get you a bigger paycheck. Hoping ain't going to create more wealth. You've got to take massive action and unless you're willing to do so, you know, I wish you a lot of luck and a lot of success, but don't have regrets later in life because you didn't step into a bigger potential. You've got all the potential to do something big with your life, whether you choose to do it or whether you choose not to is largely up to you. You know, you're basically um, a reflection of decisions you've made. So let's that's, start making that's some more right decisions. There. Exactly. So let's start making some wise decisions. That's awesome. I'm going to be listening to our episode here and taking notes with, uh, you know, a lot of yeah. times I've, I've yeah. interviewed 
everywhere from the inventor, inventor of the MP3 player, people that have just accomplished crazy things. Also, especially early on, like 2018, 2019, when I was starting out the podcast, talk to people that talking about they're going to be a millionaire, they're going to be rich somebody. They're so, okay. Well, what are you doing? You know, are you have you written a book? Right. Are you speaking? Are you doing well? No, I'm, I'm working. My boss sucks, and I'm doing this and that. And, I know someday I want to be rich. I'm manifesting it. I'm right. I'm manifesting it. <laughs> yeah, that's, I know yeah. that's been a real popular thing right now. But Yeah, I call those people the dabblers. Are you a dabbler or are yeah. you a doer? You know, and you've got to decide really quick whether you want to dabble in something and you can dabble all you want or you can physically take action and be a doer and commit yourself. And, you know, much like you, I've interviewed a lot of people on our podcast, learned from some of the greats. And one of the things that I heard Tim Grover say when I was uh, spending some time listening to Tim, he said, look, you know, I've coached the greatest of the greats. I mean, I was the coach to Michael Jordan, you know, Kobe before he passed, you know, people like Tiger Woods. And so when people ask me, like, what separates them from pretty much everybody else in the sport? He said, it's one thing. He said, most people do not look at themselves in the mirror and look at themselves introvertly and apologize for their past if they're not happy where they are in life. They just continue to do the same things. He said, people like Jordan, like Tiger Woods, like Kobe have made a decision and committed to it to go pro in every area of their life and put their amateurish ways behind them. And until you make that decision, you will continue to replicate the things that have got you where you are, and you'll continue to have the same level of success or the lack of success. So, you know, basically looking at yourself and selling yourself on a bigger future, it's a tough sale. I tell people, you know, you might be the best salesman around making big paychecks, number one person at your company, but the toughest sale you will ever make is to yourself because we've got the noise in our mind telling us don't do this we can't do that and unfortunately most people listen to the noise <laughs> you know what i've learned from coach michael burt and others is the highly successful people do not listen to the noise they don't listen to the naysayers they have a goal they're focused on it and they just continue plodding forward every single day and ultimately, that goal becomes a reality. <laughs> and one of the things, you know, talking about not hearing, not listening to the noise, it's, uh, you know, I was sponsoring events at the Denver Coliseum and had some pretty major stuff going on. But still, mm -hmm. I'd get home, you know, I had 18 bodybuilders following me around in the in my company logo shirts. And, you know, I'd yeah. snap and tell them, okay, we're sitting over here. And felt like I had the world by the horns, but still mm -hmm. get home and had a hard time believing that that I was what everybody else saw me as. And uh, yeah. I know that's a long, a big thing with, I mean, a lot of leaders that are massively successful feeling like, well, if they only knew the self-doubt or whatever, what is sure. your, how do you get over that besides surrounding yourself with other influencers and leaders who, who are doing what you're, you know, what you're doing? That's a great, that's a great question. And um, I think everybody kind of goes through that evolution uh, at some point. Um I was fortunate when I was growing up, you know, much like Robert Kiyosaki writes about in his book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Uh, you know, yeah, I had a dad and he was an executive and he was successful. Uh, my mom was, for the most part, a stay-at-home housewife. And we lived your traditional, quote, middle class, maybe upper middle class. But I had a very wealthy, rich uncle. And um, I looked up to him and I admired him. I, I mean, I knew very quickly it was much better to have a lot of money <laughs> than to not have it. But um, he was uh, one of the owners of the Palm Beach Country Club. And I remember when I was about seven or eight, he was walking me around and he said, you see that man over there, Brad? And I said, yeah, Uncle Henry. He said, that man makes all the hangers that hang in your closets at home. And this guy over there makes all of the erasers that go into the end of your pencils at school. And I'll never forget this. He put his hand on my shoulder and he said, someday, if you can find out what you're really, really gifted at, like what you do better than anybody else you know, and create content around that and deliver it to the world, it can really help people. And in doing that, you'll also help yourself. And, you know, it was like a revelation where I heard it, but I didn't really make sense out of it. And then fast forward almost now 40 years, I was watching TV and Steve Harvey was on his stage in front of his audience and he said, I believe everybody here in my audience today has a special talent. All of you have a God-given gift. It's like your primary skill. He said, the problem is 97% of the people in this room will never figure out what that is. 
But he said, if you can figure Powerful. out what that hard skill is, like what you do better than anybody else you know, and you can deliver that to the world, it will make you wildly successful. And it was about three weeks later, I was actually on my back patio. I remember the moment vividly. I was drinking a scotch and I was smoking a cigar. And I was like, holy crap, like my hard skill is I know how to raise money better than anybody I've ever met. I mean, I've raised millions, tens of millions. And um, I decided at that moment to take that, create Capital School, which is now our coaching program, our mentorship, and launch this about a little over a year ago. And we're so blessed. I mean, you know, it's solved a major problem for entrepreneurs and business owners because they need to know how to raise money and attract investors. But today, you know, we coach people in almost 10 countries around the globe. I got students in Australia, New Zealand, Canada, here in the U.S., Portugal, Finland, Brazil, the U.K., because people want to know how to raise money. You know, when I talk to people in a strategy call, I say, look, where do you see yourself in three years? And invariably, 90% of the time, the answer I get is something similar to this. Oh, I've had this big dream, or I've got this goal, I want to build a business, or I want to do this. And I'm like, well, how long have you had this idea? Oh, I don't know, maybe three or four years. Well, and what are you doing now? Why have, why have you wasted all that time? Like, why have you not yet started? Oh, I, I don't have the money. I'm like, don't you realize every dollar you need is available in the world today? It's yeah. simply in the pockets of somebody else. You know, it's like Grant Cardone says, how do you think Grant's built a multi-billion dollar real estate empire? He's used other people's money. And so I said, let me coach and teach you how to raise capital, how to use the internet, how to advertise, how to have conversations. And literally this business idea or this dream you've had, can become a reality for you like within the next 12 to 18 months. And that's why I think we've been as successful as we have. It's that I've realized I teach people how to attract and raise capital better than anybody I've ever met. And so I've sold myself on that fact. And I think that, you know, sharing that with others resonates because they're like, dude, if I'm going to learn how to raise money, I can learn from this guy over here that maybe has raised 50, 60 million or I can learn how to raise money from the guy that's raised $2 billion. Big difference there. You've also done an incredible job of building your personal brand where people recognize recognize you and understand that you're yeah. not only good at making money or good at raising money, your word is your worth, your worth is your word, you, you do what yeah. you say you're going to do, and they can trust you. So that's, that's another huge thing that I... I took away from this. And you know, it, it's you. really, you know, brand is so very important. Um, it's it's actually probably more important than most people think it is. Um, you know, whether it's a name, whether it's a logo, you know, our logo is the safe. I wear my shirt, wear my hat. It's on our website. But people don't realize the value of a brand. Actually, when you think of brands like McDonald's, the Arches, you think of Nike, the Swoop or Apple, the Apple. You know, that brand itself is actually more valuable than the company. And I learned that through a company that I was working with called SmartStop. Um, they're one of the largest premier operators of self-storage properties in the United States and uh, in Canada. And the CEO had done a wonderful job. He had put together a really nice portfolio of real estate and he wanted to sell the portfolio. And so he was out, you know, in the marketplace trying to sell and he had a meeting with one of the largest storage operators. And they said, Michael, you know, we love what you've done. Great job. We'd like to offer you $900 million for your company. And he's like, wow, this is more money than I've ever seen. You know, uh, most people would have like jumped at the opportunity. But he said, thank you so much. You know, I'd like to go home and confer with my advisors. And uh, he went back, slept on it and basically called them back and said, you know, um, I need a couple of days. And so he reached out to the business broker and uh, shortly thereafter, a second large company came forward. He flew out to see them and they basically wrote him a check for one point three billion. So four hundred million dollar difference. And he just asked the second company, he's like, I'm not going to tell you who it was, but just a couple of days ago, I was offered nine hundred million. Why did you offer me one point four billion? And they said, it's not the real estate, it's the brand. He said, you've done a phenomenal job creating a brand. Like, for example, in the storage industry, most people know public storage, every door on a storage unit is bright orange. <laughs> yeah. You know, extra space. If you know them, it's green. 
every door on his was blue and he had a very recognizable logo. He said, we're not buying the real estate, Michael, we're buying your brand. And when I heard that, I'm like, wow, that's powerful. So, you know, brand is everything. You really got to focus that. You got to protect it. And uh, you got to basically use that to create business opportunities and connect with people. I always tell people, you're just one connection away from somebody that can change your life forever. That's the reason to go to events like Grow Stack Drive. That's the reason to be in the room, to you know walk up and shake the hand of Jesse Itzler, you know, go up and introduce yourself to John Maxwell or to myself or to David Meltzer or Ken Jocelyn, because you never know what any of these people can do to help you and your business grow. Yeah. Awesome. And if people haven't got their tickets yet, is that growstackdrive.com forward slash Brad or what's your... Yep. You, uh, That's it. You got, yep. Just uh, www.growstackdrive.com forward slash Brad, B-R-A-D. Get your tickets, get in the room. It is going to be probably one of the best business building and entrepreneurial events for the Southeastern half of the United States. I mean, you get a world class lineup. I mean, Dr. John Maxwell, the guy is a phenomenal author, one of the best leadership speakers in the world, bar none. I mean, I put him up there with the Tony Robbins, Zig Ziglar, such a phenomenal reputation. You know, David Meltzer, a lot of people don't know. David, of course, ran one of the largest sports management companies in the country. And the movie Jerry Maguire was actually modeled after his company. Um, and so, you know, he'll be there. Um, Ken Jocelyn, Anthony Trucks, uh, all just phenomenal speakers. And uh, you want to get there. You want to learn. And then, of course, you want to get home and just pick a couple of those ideas that you hear while you're there implement them. And I guarantee you'll see major, major changes in your life over the next six to 12 months. And one of the things about the conference, this being a, you know, not a, not a 10X type sized conference with tens of thousands of people there, but just being a smaller conference, it's going to give you the opportunity to be, you know, have these one-on-one -on -one connections and really get in there down, down and dirty with the local. I mean, you got what, 20 different speakers yourself yeah. on the actual and just incredible leaders who can share a lot and can teach a lot, but then also yeah. being a smaller event, you've got the opportunity to connect with some of these people and, and have a chance to not only be listening like a, a interview, mm -hmm. but also be able to be there right down the front. See the sweat on your forehead as you're, as you're talking, huh? Absolutely. You know, and I can tell you just in my personal business, you know, being on stage, going to these events, taking pictures of myself with Floyd Mayweather, you know, Shark Tank's Kevin Harrington, Sharon Lecter, the Tim Stories, the Bobby Castro's, the Brandon Dawson's, Bradley's, it's definitely elevated my career tremendously because it gives you so much credibility. Imagine if you're an entrepreneur, you're a business owner, you want to be a speaker, and you come to this event and you're taking pictures of you alongside Jesse Itzler, or you alongside David Meltzer, and then you post that on your social media. It's going to give you credibility. It's going to give you social influence. It's going to make you a person of interest. And so don't over, don't underestimate how you can use this to your advantage in your branding, in your marketing. Um, and so, you know, you definitely want to be there. I'll be there. And uh, like I said, I stay for the whole event. I'm not one of these fly in, fly out. You can sit down and have breakfast with me, pull me aside, get to know me, ask questions, uh, buy my books. <laughs> uh, but really, you know, I, I go to these really to add value and help people. Uh, you know, I wake up every day blessed. I don't need to be doing what I do. I've got mailbox money. I've got assets. I do it to help change people's lives and get everybody that wants to connect with me to a better place. If you guys have not got your tickets yet, be sure to go to the, go to growstackdrive.com forward slash Brad, get yourself a ticket. Not only is that giving you a, a bit of a commission on the sale or whatever, yeah. but also I think they get a discount. There's a, there's they get a, a discount. That's right correct. They, they do get a discount. Yes, yes, yes. You bet. Cool, man. I, I'm so excited to be meeting up with you there and look forward to hopefully buying you a cup of coffee or picking your brain <laughs> a little bit there as well, man. It's going to be awesome, I tell you. I'm excited for it. Uh, I just bought my tickets today, and I uh, can't wait. That sounds absolutely awesome. Well, thanks so much for being a great guest on the show, and, man, I just really look forward to connecting with you, Brad. I appreciate it. We'll have to get you on our podcast as well. I'll have Lisa send out a uh, invite. You can pick a time next week, and we'll find time to do the same thing and reciprocate. Sounds and uh, you know, we got a great podcast very well listened to. And, uh, you know, we'd love to see you at our event. We do an event in April called Capital Con. And uh, we'd love to have you there. We got some great speakers, Cody Askins. We got one of the top uh, endurance athletes in the world, uh, Darren Miller, who's in the Guinness Book of World's Records. I mean, the guy is just unbelievable at what he's accomplished. 
We got uh, uh, A&E reality TV star Dave Seymour from the TV hit show Flipping Boston. So, you know, hopefully we can uh, get you there and help uh, help us promote it. That sounds great. I'll uh, we'll, we'll chat here once I stop recording as well and look forward to talking about that, too. Thanks again for being on the show.